I had a very long career actually in the asset management business. I spent almost 30 years on Wall Street. I was always in the investing business. And by the time I retired in 2005, I was 44 years old. Um, and it was, a, it was actually a great career. Um, but being in the investment management business, some of you guys may realize this, I was most often the only woman in the room. I was definitely the only woman on any management team that I was ever on. And I was also quite often the youngest person. Um, and so I would get asked all the time, what are the secrets to your success? And early in my career, I actually had decided what I wanted to do, not exactly as my career, but what I wanted to do with my life. And I said, from, from the time I began my career in 1979, I said, you know what, I'm going to do three things. I am going to honor God, I am going to solve problems, and I'm going to help people. And so for that entire time of my career uh, in big financial institutions, I decided honoring God really meant that I would work really hard because my life actually was a reflection of God's character. And I had heard this um, saying once that really stuck with me. Somebody said, your actions are speaking so loud that I can't hear what you're saying. And so I decided it was really more important what I did than how I acted, or I mean, sorry, than what I said. Um, and so I decided honoring God meant working hard and living my life in a way that really honored his character. The second thing, uh, solving problems and helping people, the second and third thing, um, basically those came from what I believed God gave me as gifts. So I do, I was blessed with the gift of being a problem solver, and I was also blessed with the gift of being others focused, which all of that really helped me in my career. So those three things, working hard, solving problems, and helping people, had a really great result. Basically, I just kept getting promoted. And by the time I was 40, I actually was promoted to the job that I retired from. I was running a $50 billion asset management firm. And I was the highest ranking woman at Deutsche Bank globally. Um, and so I had a fantastic career. In 2005, um, I actually had just completed the biggest turnaround of any of Deutsche Bank's uh, management businesses. We had gone from losing $130 million a year to making a 25% profit margin. And so in April of 2005, I actually was out celebrating with my management team at the Yale Club. And walking back from the Yale Club to my apartment, I had this moment where I just thought, wow, this is it. Like, I've made all this money. I've had this tremendously successful career that I really love, but I really don't feel like I'm serving God's purpose. There must be something else. And so the next day, I flew to London, and I quit my job. Um, <laughs> yes. And I, I want to point out that in that 30-year career, um, being the only woman, I had a lot of experiences, uh, as you guys might imagine, um, that were quite unusual that most people don't get to experience. And I wanted to share just two of those experiences uh, to help people understand sort of how it was that I lived out my life, particularly as a woman in an all-male business. So basically, the first thing was, it was in the late 80s. I was in my late 20s. I was on a management team with all men who now, I, I would say, were not old. But at the time when I was in my late 20s, <laughs> they all seemed old, right? Because they were like my age now. Um, and so we would have these debates where some topic would come up. And if I disagreed, or if I had a point to make, they would humor me for a while, they would debate it, and then, I mean, every single time, they would say, you know, let's take a break. They would get up, they would go into the men's room, 
They would finish the conversation, and then they would come back into the room and they said, okay, we're done. We've decided this and this and this, right? And so eventually, this happened enough times that there was a, a point in time where I had an issue that I really cared about, right? Most of the time, I didn't really care. But on this one particular day, I'm arguing my point really hard <laughs> because I really cared about it. And they do what I expected, which is they say, let's take a break. And they all get up and they walk into the men's room. And so I thought, dang it. I just walked in there right behind them, and I just, I just kept talking. And of course, when I got in there, I'm sitting there thinking, now what do I do? So I, I go in the stall, and I close the door, and I just keep talking. And I'm just you know, making my point, making my point, and they're all nervously trying to answer me. And one by one, I can hear them leave, right? And eventually, I think, I wonder if they're gone. So I, I peek under the door, and I don't see any legs. And so I go, well, it's safe to go back. But what I will tell you is they never did it again. And so, <laughs> so again, I was young when that happened. I, I look at it now and go, gosh, would I have the guts to do that today? I don't know. Um, but what I will tell you is I do know that it influenced me in the rest of my career. Um, and I, I started to realize um, that, you know what, there wasn't that much difference between us, and I just needed to do my job, going back to working hard, solving problems, and helping people. So that's what I did, and I didn't worry about things like that. And the next story actually happened many years later in 2004. I was in Berlin. Um, I was on Deutsche Bank's uh, executive committee for the bank, and so every six months or so, we would meet somewhere in the world to have a strategic discussion. Um, and they would invite the top 200 managers in all of Deutsche Bank around the world. And so by this point, I actually had been to about eight of these meetings. And at, at one meeting, a female uh, colleague of one of the men who was invited to the meeting came to make a presentation. So she made her presentation. Right after that was lunch, and so they invited her to stay for lunch. And I could see her like making a beeline for me, which I thought was really interesting, because it wasn't somebody I knew. And she, I could see she was seeking me out as I was trying to pick a table where I was going to sit. And she sat right down next to me. And I introduced myself. We talked for a few minutes. And pretty soon, she leans over. She holds my arm. And she actually whispers, so what is it like to be the only woman in this room? And I looked around and I said, I never noticed. And it's one of those things that I really, looking back, I go, it is one of the reasons I was really successful because I didn't notice. I just was busy doing my job, helping people, solving problems, working at what I knew God wanted me to do. Um, and I know that that is one of the things that really contributed to my success. And so when I told you in 2005, um, when I was walking back to my apartment, I had that epiphany that caused me to quit my job. I will tell you, at that defining moment, um, I really thought that to serve God, I needed to be a pastor or a missionary. And so I thought, you know what? After I retire, I'm going to spend my life figuring out, or I'm going to be one of those, and I'm going to spend the next few years trying to figure out what that is. And so that began a journey, um, which I now call my wilderness journey. <laughs> um, from 2005 to 2008, I was on this desperate mission to find out what was my purpose. So I was in every kind of Bible study. I was in the Word, like, uh, you know, literally all day long. I was traveling around the world helping out with causes that I really cared about. And I kept thinking, you know, and I prayed desperately. I will tell you, I was on my knees so much saying, you know, God, I just, just show me what you want me to do. Just tell me what your purpose is. I will figure out a way to go do it. And through that experience, actually, actually fortunately, um, by 2005, God showed me and so in 2005, I failed retirement. Um, and I started a company that is an impact investing company that basically allows me to use the skills that God gave me to change the world. 
And there's two important lessons, actually, I call them my aha moments, uh, that happened during that wilderness journey that God really affirmed to me what I was supposed to be doing. And the first aha is that business actually was my calling. I actually had been living a life that was honoring God that entire 30-year career. And through a number of experiences that were really unique and really um, unexpected, God showed me how I changed a whole bunch of people's lives or spoke into their lives while I was doing what, you know, what I actually was supposed to be doing. And one of the people, actually, who um, unexpectedly contacted me during that time is here, Donna Schumel. And I had no idea that I had touched her life at all. Um, and again, through a whole bunch of things, God basically said, look, you were living your life. Your character was showing me. And so you were doing exactly what I wanted you to do, which honestly, obviously, was very freeing for me. <laughs> um, but it also is what allowed me then to start my company and basically say to other people, you know, it doesn't matter what you do, but whatever you do, do it for God, right? You need to be doing it as you're working for the Lord, not for others, not for men, not for yourself. You need to do it as working for the Lord, and then God will honor that. The second aha moment that I had, um, which was also pretty freeing, um, was I had some practices in my life, in my, my whole life, not just my business life, but um, that started with spending time with the Lord every single morning. So I would spend time in prayer and in the Word. No matter how much earlier I had to get up, I would make sure I had that time in the morning because I knew if I didn't that the day would not go well. And so it was just a practice that I had. And there were a whole bunch of other things that when I was asked to speak at an event called Women on Wall Street, they said, well, we want to hear about, you know, what do you think are specifically all the things that made you successful? And so in working through that, I made a list of these seven things, um, like sort of characteristics and practices that I followed. And you know, I gave that talk. It was years later during this wilderness journey that I discovered that every single one of those things, all of my practices, all of the ways I treated people, all of the ways I made decisions, actually could be found in the Bible. And it was through this really awesome discovery um, that I was, I was actually then able to actually help other people see that really the Bible is all they need, but they do need to study it. And so I'm going to do a very quick survey. How many of you ever bought a new car? Of course, right? Now, truthfully, how many of you read the manual before you started driving it? Yeah. Oh, somebody. OK. Well, I will be honest. I bought a new car. I did not read the manual. Um, and every time I wanted to go to do something, I'd have to look it up, right? But Basically, if you think about the Bible as our manual for life, if you study it now, one, you'll be prepared for anything that comes up. I mean, anything that comes up. And even if you have to refer to it, that's OK. Um, the other thing is, it allows you to get the maximum out of the life that God's given you, right? Just like a car manual. There's so many things that I don't know my car can do because I haven't read the manual. And if I did it, it would allow me to get the maximum experience out of my car. So it's no different. If we read the Bible and we study it, we'll get the maximum out of the life God's given us. That's it. <laughs> oh, you don't need that. Thank you so much, Gloria. And sure. uh, as I shared with you privately before, I was excited to hear about some of the great practical steps you've talked about in corporate America. What, what word might you leave with someone who's in that environment now, they're facing political correctness, and how could you introduce some of these keys to success to them, and what would you say today to encourage them? You know, I actually have the opportunity to do that quite often. Great. And the number one thing I tell them is focus on serving God. So that scripture that I put up there, I hand it out to people. And I say, you know what? When you go to work every day, do it because you're working for God. And do it like you're living for the Lord. And know that you're an advertisement for him. 
And so whatever you do, however you make decisions, however you treat people, whatever, it's all about focusing on, I mean, it's all about the Lord, so focus on him. Focus on thinking about how he would do it. And then you, it's honestly, then you never are faced with those challenging issues because you always know what to do.